Hello, and welcome to Ipsa Dixit. I'm Brian L. Fry, Spears Gilbert Associate Professor of Law at the University of Kentucky College of Law. And my co-host today will be Jake Linford, Associate Professor of Law at Florida State University College of Law. And we'll be interviewing Guy Rube, who is a Professor of Law at the Ohio State University Moritz College of Law. And Guy's going to be talking about his extensive work on artist resale royalties, uh, coming from really like every direction. And, and angle. Uh, so Thank you, welcome. Brian. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> so I was wondering if you could just start uh, by explaining to people what artist resale royalties are and where they came from. So artist resale royalties, in essence, it's a very simple principle, right? That is this. When you sell a piece of art, you're not the artist. You bought art, you know, a painting, a sculpture, and now you resell it. You need to give the artist something. Usually it's 5%. It can be slightly below that, slightly more than that. But a certain percentage of what you get should go to the artist. It's coming from friends. And, you know, we have some good thing coming from there. Some, <laughs> some stuff that are more controversial. So uh, it, it passed, the first act passed in France in 1920. Uh, after a long debate in their society... Uh, the idea was it's not fair. It's not fair that the dealer will make so much money and the artist will get none. Mm -hmm. So they passed that. And then uh, many other countries passed it. And right now we have about 70-something, maybe more than 80 countries around the world who have resale royalties, which sounds like a lot. It is a lot, although that also means that many countries do not have it. And the United States is one of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, so have there ever been resale royalties in the United States? So resale royalties on the federal level never passed. We had suggesting, uh, suggestion going from the 70s. So we, the first suggestion was in 1978. And we had six bills in Congress suggesting that. And the recent one was introduced just now in September. Just very recently, four uh, congressmen introduced a bill that will enact that. So on the federal level, we never have resale royalties. Mm -hmm. On the state level, California did pass. California in 1976 passed resale royalty uh, bill. It required 5% royalties. So that was on the book from, uh, uh, for 40-something years. It was not well enforced, <laughs> according to some report. In the first 40 years, there was about 350-something thousand dollars collected, which if you think about it, it's really very little. Yeah. Uh, and that uh, bill is mostly dead. What killed it is a, a series of decisions of the Ninth Circuit from the last few years. So in 2011, a group of artists and groups says, well, we have that bill and no one enforces it. Let's do something about it. <laughs> so they filed class action against all the big players, Sotheby's, Christie's, eBay, all of them were on the hook for a lot of money, actually, because they didn't collect with royalty for 40 years, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So those defendants says, all right. So, so far, we let your bill be on the books and no one did anything about it. Now that you actually want to enforce it, we think it's unconstitutional. <laughs> <laughs> you are violating the Constitution. You are violating the, the Congress Clause of the Constitution, and it's preempted. The case went on in the in the court system f since 2011 until basically a few months ago. By the end of this litigation, with minor minor exception, the Ninth Circuit held that uh, resale royalty are not enforceable. They are preempted by the Copyright Act in a decision that I think is wrong, but <laughs> it's still uh, I'm I I myself cannot trump the Ninth Circuit. So <laughs> the bill the, the, the bill is is, uh -huh. is mostly dead. So right now. As of right now, we don't have resale royalty in this country on any level. So, so that that case was decided this year, right? Yes. 2018. Uh, do you think there's any chance the Supreme Court takes an en banc call on it? I mean, it seems kind of like a California issue that the Ninth Circuit may have resolved. And given that there aren't any other state law state laws out there, maybe the Supreme Court just leaves it alone. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't be uh, very hopeful that the Supreme Court will take such a case. And bank, maybe. But the issue is that it, it's really narrow now. It's even not interesting. The Ninth Circuit like to take those cases sure. in, in a big one. So does the Supreme Court want it? I think you have a good point there, uh, there Jake. It's sort of resolved, and it's sort mm -hmm. of such a small thing. I think it's not that small. I mm -hmm. think what makes it interesting is that that case tell us something about how state regulate 
a secondary market in artwork. Mm -hmm. And that tells us something about how states regulate secondary market, period. And that's a big one. Mm -hmm. That's a big one. That's an issue that the, the Supreme Court visited uh, twice in the last few years, once in a copyright case, one on, on the patents. And so if you want to explore the issue from all angle, yeah. where's state law? Where, yeah. where, where does state law place that? So in theory, if I had to pitch it to the Supreme Court, that's how I will try to make it uh, attractive to the Supreme Court. I'm not, I wouldn't put my, my money on the Supreme Court <laughs> taking this one. So why did the Ninth Circuit think it was preempted? And, and why do you think the Ninth Circuit was wrong? So I think the main argument of the Ninth Circuit uh, is that it's clo too close to copyright, mm -hmm. right? So under copyright law, you have distribution rights. So here's a distribution right for work under uh, copyright law. And this is sort of copyright 101, right? <laughs> As a copyright owner, I get to control the distribution of my work. And distribution is very broadly defined. Any transfer of possession of the copies is distribution. So this is one of those cases where we have a very, very broad right, but then there is an exception that eats away almost all of it, and that's the first sale doctrine. The first sale doctrine says once I sell it, I'm done. My right uh, is exhausted. I can't enforce it anymore. That's the right in any particular copy. Yes, in any particular copy, exactly. Now comes the Ninth Circuit that says, all right, this looks to me really, really like a like distribution, right? And the, and the Copyright Act says that any right that is equivalent to copyright has to come from federal law. So state cannot create right that equivalent whatever equivalent means, <laughs> to, uh, to copyright. And they say, this looks really, really similar to copyright. Mm -hmm. You are affecting secondary market, and look how similar it is to distribution right. And, and, and in a move that I think is, is really wrong, they said, distribution right give you the right, give the, art, the author, the artist, a right to be paid when the work is sold. Recent royalties is a right to be paid something, not everything, because you know, 95% go to the to the seller, 5% goes to the artist, so it's the same. My view is, oh, wow, there are so many differences here. The the really big difference, and the Ninth Circuit brushes that away. It says, distribution right is not a right to be paid. Distribution right is a right to control distribution. Mm -hmm. It's a right to control when the work will be sold first. I have a right to decide. I don't want to put the work the copies out there. I have a right to distribute it in one market and not in another market. Or I have a right to say I'll distribute it in three years down the line. I mean, being paid is, is a tiny subject of, yeah, distribution right at the end, most people sell it for money, mm -hmm. but it's not the same. And the idea that we don't treat right to be paid and copyright the same is well established in other contexts in copyright law. So that's the technicalities. Now, I think there is a bigger issue here, and that, I think, what drives it in the background, and this is where I think I have bigger fish to fry with the Ninth Circuit, and I think in the background is this idea of you, state, are messing with stuff that we feel should be come from the federal government. Mm -hmm. And this is where I said, no, you're wrong, uh, Ninth Circuit. We never perceive the role of state as as limited as you are making it to be. The reason is that, you know, federal right is a property right. And in theory, you know, I can have a property right and I can do whatever I want with that property right. But that's just in theory. In practice, what I want to do with a property right is to sell it yeah. and to license it yeah. and to lease it and to do all those great stuff with it. And all of that right is state law. There is no federal co contract law. There is no federal secure transaction law. There is no federal corporate law. I, I need state law to do that. And when state law do that, they affect secondary market all the time. Yeah. There are so many state law right. that affect the market. So this idealistic approach that the Ninth Circuit says, there, don't mess with our federal right. They said, oh, we mess with it. State law mess with this all the time. You just pick up on one thing to say, not this. <laughs> so why not? Mm -hmm. And I think that, and I'm saying it to something that someone who said our <laughs> royalty are not a good idea. <laughs> if I were in the state legislature, I would vote it down. Right. But I think I have a right to decide if I want it or not. So I'm puzzled by one thing about that argument you just yes. raised, which is to say, it seems like my best recollection about how 
preemption doctrine works in copyright law is one thing we have said states can do that survives most preemption arguments is contract, right? Yes. We've got to write a contract. That was one of the things you flagged that is all a matter of state law. So would it work as a workaround to say um, we're going to draft a contract? Uh, imagine I have the bargaining power. That's a whole different question. Yes, but so imagine I, as the painter, have, a, have the bargaining power, and I persuade you as the buyer, look, you buy my painting, and when you resell it, at least at this first jump, really I want two things from you. Right. I want you to resell it with another royalty that comes back to me, but I want you to pay me 5% on the transaction, yeah. and you agree to that. Now, would the Ninth Circuit have said under its logic that that's also preempted? Because that we have tended to say, I think, under contract law, that sort of stuff survives preemption yeah. claims. Yeah, no, there is no way the Ninth Circuit... Well, who can... <laughs> ninth Circuit, I, I'm not guessing about the Ninth Circuit anymore. But no, I think the Ninth Circuit has enough case law about that in the context of contract mm -hmm. to say this will survive preemption. Mm -hmm. And the argument, this is different. This is different. And I said, yeah, I can understand why this is different. But in the Ninth Circuit and in other circuits also, there is all that case law around contract that says, even if you don't like contract, contract to be paid are fine. Yeah. Uh, pain is fine, but I think you're to answer a question. No, if this was created by a contract, I don't think the Ninth Circuit would have issued with that. Of course, the issue, and that goes to Brian's work, is that that contract I can't enforce it down the line right. when it, when the work starts changing, and uh -huh. I can create a viral contract that will, in which the other side will promise to force the the, the next person down the line to sign the contract. And as long as they do that, good. That's great. That can work. But if, if the chain is ever broken, I'm done with my cause of action. I can't sue downstream under contract law unless I create some security interest. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, one thing that always got, gets me about, about artist resale royalties and about kind of the intersection of, of the art market and copyright law in general is just what a poor fit for each other they seem to be. I mean, the kind of the, the push or the desire to have resale royalty rights seems to in some ways be related to artists' interest in monetizing in a scarcity market when we usually think of copyright as being something about a commodity market. And it just seems such a like a strange thing to say it's preempted when in some sense it, it, it's not even trying to do the same kind of thing. Yes, I, I agree. I agree. It, it, it's a. Uh, <laughs> I mean, although I will, uh, to be honest here, resale royalty is funky, right? Yeah. Uh, the justification for resale royalties are questionable to begin with. So uh, my, my argument that it shouldn't, that it should survive preemption, is not about the rationale, because that requires me to know what the rationale for resale royalty is, mm. uh, and I think different people argue different things. And I, in some of my earlier work, I argued that I'm not convinced by any of those rationales, <laughs> so I, 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 I don't know what they are. I, I, my focus is more on the functioning mm -hmm. of copyright versus the functioning of free royalties. And I said one of them is a property right, a right to control, and the other one is a right to be paid. In, the, in, in my work, I compare the right to be paid in some degree as taxation, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, as the buyer perspective, Yes, I, I, I'd rather not pay resale royalty, I understand that, and uh, that's fine, but I'd rather not pay taxes also. But the mm -hmm. fact that the state tax something doesn't mean that they are intervening in something that is dedicated to the federal government in a way that they are not supposed to. Yeah, and that's interesting, because there really is no reason that the state couldn't just impose a tax yes. on the sale of artwork, Yes. right? And No. And no. I guess the concern the Ninth Circuit has is you can't impose a tax and then give it to particular people, but why yeah. not? Yeah, I mean, listen, well, here's the thing. Resale royalty is not tax, because tax, the other definition of what tax is, and you can't say it's actually a tax, because tax cannot go to one individual, right? So it, it's not a tax, but you're absolutely right. As a functional matter, state can create tax, and they do create It's not just can, they yeah, do. It's, they I mean, they have sell tax, they have income tax. And, 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 and sale tax is very similar to that, right? I sell art, I have to pay. If, if, if tomorrow the state of California passed an act that is identical word for word for their preempted bill, and we just call it a tax and get it to the state, it has to go to the state, it can't go mm -hmm. to the artist, that's fine. If they decided to take that money and give it to artists in general, 
that's also fine. They can do all of that, and Sotheby's and Christie can argue until they're blue in the face that this is preempted. I can't imagine a court buying into that. Mm -hmm. because state tax trans sales transaction all the time. And there's a Supreme Court case that the Ninth Circuit somehow forgot about, an old case from the 30s, in which people made that argument. Mm. So uh, the test of Georgia uh, and sale tax on royalties from, uh, on royalties from uh, I think, movies, if I remember correctly, mm. and the copyright owner says, hey, hey, this is a federal right. Mm. Yeah, you cannot tax it. And the Supreme Court says, come on. <laughs> they are taxing your, street, your, your money. Yeah. They're not studying anything federal, and they can do that. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's and, just and, an income tax. Yeah, it's an income tax, and, 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 and federal law does it. And, and I think it's not exactly on point, but I think it's, it's a nice analogy. And the, the Supreme Court says there, listen, you are not exempt. The fact that your right is coming from federal law doesn't mean you are exempt from the general rules that state apply to their markets, because mm -hmm. even in the 30s, they understand state regulate markets that's just what states do and so you need to be very careful because you, before you said that state regulation of a market is preempted it doesn't mean that it can never be preempted i'm just saying it usually is not <laughs> yes yes yeah do you yeah. think there's any chance of one of these federal resale royalty bills actually <laughs> passing i hope not <laughs> i don't know you know i it's really difficult to know uh, the, the last bill that was introduced in September was introduced by a four uh, congressmen, two Democrats, two Republicans. Mm. Unlike the bill before that in 2014 that was introduced by three Democrats. So there is some uh, remnants of a partisan support mm -hmm. for that proposition. What they have working on their side, and that, that is powerful, we need to say, there's a 2013 research study by uh, the Copyright Office, the U.S. Copyright Office. So there is a history there. In, in 1990, let's even go back. Mm. In the 80s, there was a push to pass visa royalties as, passed, as part mm. of a big regulation we did on creative artists that mm. eventually went into the virtual visual yeah. artists' rights act. Right act. Vera. Vera. Yeah, 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 Vera. And Vera had the recent royalty provision in it. Yeah. And as part of that bill, they said, okay, no, we are not giving you that. You get all the other stuff. We are not giving you that, but we'll have a study. So the Copyright Office created a study. It's about 700 and something pages in 1992. At the end of that study, they said, it makes no sense. We don't see why we want that. No. Mm -hmm. 2011, another push for it, which Congress didn't take. But as part of that push, the people who who asked for it, asked Copyright Office, are you willing to do another study? And Copyright Office says, sure, why not? <laughs> More power to us. <laughs> Create another 200-something uh, study in which they say, actually, there is a loyalty makes sense, let's do it. Mm -hmm. And they explain why they changed their position. We can go into that. Uh, I'm not convinced by any of that. Yeah. But that is powerful, because you have a federal agency that's supposed to be an expert in this field telling you mm -hmm. that this is a good idea. So I think that, plus the fact that there are people on both sides pushing it, plus the fact that the state, that the federal court says states cannot do that, federal law should do that, if any, I think that there is some push toward that. It can get some momentum. I don't think it will pass. Mm -hmm. I hope it will not pass, mm -hmm. because I, I think... It, it, it's, it's just bad policy. It just mm. makes no sense kind of policy. It's, 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 it's a bad from distributive angle. It's in effect, inefficient and ineffective. Mm. Do we have well, any evidence about what kind of the effects, the practical effects of adopting? Yeah, I'll tell you a little bit. I'll, I'll just say one yeah. sentence about the previous one. Yeah. The fact that it's inefficient and, and, and unequitable doesn't mean that Congress wouldn't pass it. Let's <laughs> agree to that, right? <laughs> that doesn't right. guarantee that yeah. Congress wouldn't pass it. Uh, we have some, we don't have a lot. The, 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 the empirical data on resale royalties is surprisingly scarce. Mm -hmm. It's partly because uh, California is not the only place who had that bill and didn't enforce it. Mm -hmm. The other, because you can say there are 80 countries where is, I should have a ton of empirical data. Mm -hmm. We have a little bit. Part of it because many of those countries have tiny, tiny, tiny markets, right? Mm -hmm. So 
in some respect, who cares, right? <laughs> now, France is a huge market. France has a decent market, but also they passed it a long time ago. And there's some report that even there, it's not really well enforced. Oh, interesting. The really, really interesting one is, is the UK. Mm -hmm. Because the UK is a, big, is, is a major market. It's a bigger market, the second or the third in the world, depending on how you count. Mm -hmm. And they passed the bill in the last 10 years. But it's such a new bill there. It's passed in 2006, but until 2012, it wasn't fully uh, enacted. They had some... So mm -hmm. we had full resale royalty in the UK for six years. Mm -hmm. That's nothing. But maybe this is where we get good information. Assuming they do, they wouldn't mm -hmm. just cancel it because they passed this bill and we have good evidence about that because the EU forces them to do that. The EU really forces them. There are evidence that they, uh, you know, Tony Blair opposing it and fighting against it, but it didn't work. So mm -hmm. the, the EU forces them to pass that. So post-Brexit, I don't know if they'll do that. There is, uh -huh. there is an argument that is controversial. This is where we do have data. And it's difficult, right? The market in the UK is shrinking. That, that we do know. Mm -hmm. But the, we, we, had, we had, you know, in the last mm -hmm. 10 years, we have an economic crisis on our head. So trying to see which, what exactly caused that market to shrink is very difficult. Mm -hmm. And it's controversial. Yeah. 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 That's interesting. Where do you think the pressure in in Europe was to kind of force this down people's throats who didn't want it? Was it just compliance with Bern or something more about like, you know, if you want to be part of our club, you've got to play yeah. by our rules? Or... I, I, th I, I think Bern sounds like to require that. Yeah. They said you can't have it and if you have it, you, you have some rights if you pass it. I think it's part of our club. I mean, it's a part of, I mean, it's a general motivation on the EU to have unified laws across the Union. Uh, I mean, you can ask yourself why all those West continental Europe countries passed that one after the other. Mm -hmm. I think it's notion of fairness and equitable, which, I, again, I, I think is wrong, but that's more consistent with maybe European approach to intellectual property rights, maybe. But once, you know, once you have two-thirds of the continent have that, and you want to have a unified system, you can understand why you said, okay, you have, <laughs> that's, the, that's the part of playing the game, right? I mean, we pay, the United States played dearly mm -hmm. to be part of the world. We gave up our, our formalities. We gave up stuff that we liked, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. to play with the world. Mm -hmm. So the EU is pay, have to pay a price to play with other European countries. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean. It's also possible if it's being enforced, and, and you seem to suggest that maybe it's not. What you have is you have if you have a bunch of countries where they're enforcing it, and then a country where there's no enforcement, it's just like cigarettes, right? Yes. When I was exactly. in, or, or or so I grew up in Wyoming, yeah. And the kids in Utah they could only buy three two beer, and it was it was a more potent yeah. beer in Wyoming or Idaho, so they'd run to the border <laughs> for their beer or their yes. fireworks, right? Mm -hmm. And so maybe the art market, you shift yourself to the to the to the UK art market as yeah. opposed to other countries because you don't have to pay the royalty. Yeah, that's absolutely absolutely an argument. And some European country made this argument. There is some tiny evidence, and it's so old that it's hard to know, almost 100 years old, of tiny galleries moving from France to England mm -hmm. in the 1920s, you know, mm -hmm. after, the, after that bill is passed. So that argument was made. But, you know, UK made the argument, and I think Israel said, yes, but, you know, when we pass it, do you think it will just go back to France or just go to the United States, <laughs> right? <laughs> to China, to other countries, or Switzerland, mm -hmm. other countries that don't ever sort of, yeah, I think you're absolutely right. I think mm -hmm. that's, that, that is a valid argument saying, hey, come on, it's not fair. You, the UK, take all our French and German transactions. Mm -hmm. And now that the UK does it, some of it will go back to France and Germany, but many of them, the big ones, will go just to a third, th to a third country that doesn't ever sort of it. That's the issue of passing resort in the United States. One of the arguments that people who oppose resort may uh, make is like, you know, that transaction will go to China the next mm -hmm. morning. You know, yeah. I don't know much of it. And that is bad. That is bad because it's not just that Theresa Royalty would not be effective. It's the secondary market create other benefits to our society. The fact that the biggest resale market in the world is New York, create jobs in New York, mm -hmm. create income in New York, and income that we can tax, create, there are people who work to support those auction houses. All of it will go to another country. Mm -hmm. Or not, not all of it. But a lot of it might go to another country. It's not just... All right, we wouldn't have royalty, fine. We don't have them now. Mm -hmm. No, there will be collateral damage from those markets. And an artist will see some of that damage from that market, that vibrant scene that New York now has, not mm -hmm. just New York, but mainly New York City, 
will go to you know Hong Kong and or Shanghai. Yeah. Mm. That's just just a loss. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Well, thanks so much, guys. Oh, thank really you so much. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Thanks to you too, Jake. I'm glad to be here. Yeah. All right. Thank you.